Welcome to A Perfect Place to Start. Today's video is a mega video full of bee DIYs and crafts. So if that is something you're into, follow me inside and let's get started. So the first thing we're gonna create is the Be Kind sign. I'm just recycling a sign I already had at home and so I'm gonna remove these metal hearts and then I'm gonna paint it with Waverly White chalk paint and I'm gonna do the whole board including the sides. So I'm gonna take these folk art stencils that I got at Walmart and I'm going to use the beehive stencil and I'm just going to lay that on my board and cover the whole board with this beehive stencil. So I'm using the yellow chalk paint which I believe the color is called corn and I'm just going to use that over the whole board with this stencil. I did use the stencil on the sides and ends of the board as well so it looks like it kind of wraps around it. It does end up being a little bit time consuming but it's so cute when it's finally finished. So next I'm going to take some Waverly stencils that I got at Walmart and I'm just going to spell out the word kind. I measured them because I cut out the stencils to make sure that they were even when I put them on the board. And then I'm just going to use my Waverly black chalk paint which the color is ink and I'm going to go over those letters and then I like to fill in the letters so they look like one giant letter instead of having the gap. So I just go back with a smaller brush and fill in those lines. Next I got this super cute bee stencil from Amazon and I'm just going to use that Waverly ink chalk paint again and I'm going to go over the stencil in different directions for the bees along the rest of the sign. Then I'm going to take a sharpie and I'm going to draw some little lines to connect the bees. It doesn't show it in the picture but I do go through the words and there is bees on the other side of kind that it connects to. So now for our last step, we're going to take some sandpaper and we're just going to go over the whole thing. When in the video, it looks like my um, paint is smearing, but it's actually just the sand coming off. When I blow it off, you cannot see it smearing between the letters. Another great thing to give it a distressed look would have been to go over it with the Waverly Wax again. I was just worried that it would give it too much of a brown look and I wanted to make sure that you could still tell that it was a beehive behind there. I really love how this turned out and I just really love this bee stencil. It makes me want to use it everywhere. Next we're going to make a beehive using a Dollar Tree pot and some nautical rope from the Dollar Tree. You're going to need two packages of the nautical rope. As you can see in the video, it doesn't quite cover it with one. Once you have covered the whole pot with your nautical rope, we're going to take just a small piece and make it into a circle so that we can make the front of the hive. These rubber fingers I'm wearing came from the Dollar Tree and they are a lifesaver. I have a super hot glue gun and I'm always burning myself and these have been a lifesaver today. Once you have it glued on there, you're going to paint the inside with black paint. I'm using the ink by Waverly again, but you can use any acrylic paint for this. We're ready to place our bees on. I'm using buttons from Hobby Lobby today. I didn't love these buttons, but they were literally the only bee buttons I could find in any store in my area. So we're using these today. They're a bit blingy, but they do turn out pretty cute. 
Our final step, we're going to take a bow and we're going to glue it to the top. I'm using this buffalo check ribbon that I got at Hobby Lobby. All you're going to do is tie it into a shoelace bow, which is basically a bow that you would do to tie your shoes. And then you're going to glue it to the top. It can be as big or small as you like. And then you're going to dovetail the ends just to give it more of an upscaled look. third and final project today we're going to be using this adhesive cork that I got at the Dollar Tree and we're going to be using that same bee stencil and the ink by Waverly Paint again. So I'm using my stencil brush that I also got at the Dollar Tree and I really like this brush for a dollar it does a really great job. Um, you're just going to take the stencil and go all over the adhesive cork in any patterns that you like. I like to do some of it hanging off and some of it on. Then we're going to take this sign that I also got at the Dollar Tree and we're just going to trace around the back of the adhesive cork and then we're going to cut that out. I realized once I got it cut out that I didn't have enough bees on my cork so I went back and put some more bees in there and then I'm just going to peel that cork off and stick it to my sign. For this project today we're using a Dollar Tree sign that I got during Easter time and I just removed the paper from the front and I'm taking my sanding block and sanding off as much as I possibly can get off of that. Once I'm done with that I'm going to take my white Waverly chalk paint and I'm going to give it two good coats of white paint. Next I'm taking my ink by Waverly chalk paint and I'm going to use my chippy brush and just dry brush over this entire sign. Next I'm taking this honeycomb stencil that I got at Walmart and I'm just going to position it kind of off center to the side and I'm going to stencil it on with my ink by Waverly Chalk Paint. Next I'm using one of my very favorite stencils of all time. I picked it up on Amazon. I will put a link to it down in the description box. I'm just going to do like one of these bees kind of in the center and then I just kind of sporadically go around and have portions of the bees so it looks like they're flying into the side. I have a couple other videos using the same stencil and I will link those down in the description box. Once I get the bees all on this sign, then this project is complete. For this project I'm taking one of these dollar shadow boxes that I picked up at Dollar General and I just removed the teacher pencil out of the middle and I'm covering this entire thing with white Waverly chalk paint. It takes me about three coats just to cover up all of that blue that's on the outside of the box. I also covered one side of the pencil because it kind of reminded me of a house and then I got this scrapbook paper at Hobby Lobby and I just traced the house on the back of the scrapbook paper and cut it out. Then I'm going to use some Mod Podge and I'm going to glue it to the front where I painted 
And then I'm going to take my sanding block and I'm going to sand off any of the excess paper that's on the outside of the house. After it's sanded, I take some twine, I wrap it around the house, and I tie it in a knot off to the side. Then I take one of those towering blocks from the Dollar Tree and I glue it to the back of the house and then I glue that to the middle of the shadow box. Once I get it glued on there, I feel like it's still kind of missing something, so I take some of the buffalo check ribbon from Dollar Tree, I tie it in a shoelace bow, and I glue it to where I tied the knot, and then this project is complete. For this project I'm taking three pieces of scrap wood that I had in my garage and I'm covering them with my Maze Waverly chalk paint. I do the top and the sides and I leave one of the, of the bottom side unpainted because I'm just going to glue that on to the next block. This is my rendition of the three book set so if you didn't have wooden blocks you could definitely use books from the Dollar Tree. This is just like a mini version of that and could definitely fit into a three tiered tray. So then once I get my paint all on my blocks, I only did one coat of the maize paint. I take my chippy brush and some white Waverly chalk paint and I go ahead and distress the entire block set with my white Waverly chalk paint. Once I have it to the desired look I'm going for, I'm going to take some stickers that I picked up at Hobby Lobby. You can also use rub-on transfers or other stickers that they have at the Dollar Tree to recreate this as well. I'm going to spell out let it be. You could do a, any various uh, wording that you might want here. I thought of all kinds of different ones that I thought would be cute. Um, I guess I was just thinking of the Beatles and <laughs> so I went with let it be. Um, after I get my letters on there, I'm going to take some of this buffalo check ribbon and I'm going to wrap it around the block set and glue on uh, the top or the underside. And then after that, I'm going to take another little piece of the buffalo check ribbon, tie it in a shoelace bow, glue it to the front, and then this project is complete. For this project I'm using a picture frame that I picked up at a garage sale for 50 cents. It said it came from Hobby Lobby in their unfinished wood area. Um, if you wanted to go pick it up there you could or you could go to the Dollar Tree and use one of their picture frames. It would work just as well using one of those. So I cover it with one coat of my Maze Waverly chalk paint and then I'm taking the end of my paintbrush, dipping it in my ink Waverly chalk paint and just making polka dots all around the outside of the frame. Next I took some white cardstock and a bee stencil and I'm using my Ink by Waverly chalk paint and I'm just going to stencil the bee onto the white cardstock. I went ahead and glued the cardstock to this black like crinkly paper that I got at Hobby Lobby and I'm just inserting it where the picture would go and replacing the back of the frame. 
I didn't paint the back of the frame for some reason, so I need to go back and um, complete that step. Then I took some of the buffalo check ribbon and I measured around the outside of the frame where the solid yellow parts are and I'm going to glue a piece of the buffalo check ribbon to each one of those sides. last part of this project is to take some buttons that I got at the Dollar Tree and I'm just going to glue them to each corner and then this project is complete. So for this project, I'm repurposing a vase that I made earlier in the year. All I did was take a Dollar Tree vase and wrap it with some nautical rope. If you want to know how to do that, I will leave that video down in the description box. I'm going to take some more of the nautical rope from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to make it into a circle and hot glue it onto the front. This is going to be the entrance of our hive. I'm going to take some black ink uh, by Waverly Chalk Paint. I'm just going to paint that entire circle to look like the entrance. Normally I like to use buttons when I make the beehives, but I could not find any bee buttons anywhere in my town. So instead I picked up these stickers from Hobby Lobby. They are pretty realistic looking bees and I really like how they end up turning out in the long run. But um, if you can't find any buttons, stickers are a really great replacement. And I did go ahead and use my hot glue to glue the stickers on to the front of the base. Um, I did use all four of the bees that came in the bee stickers. Next I took some leftover flowers and some greenery from another project. It did come from the Dollar Tree. I went ahead and filled up the vase and then this project is complete. So we're going to use the adhesive cork board that they have at the Dollar Tree and we're just going to trace the cube and we're going to cut out four squares and we're going to put, place it on the cube. So I had some leftover from another project and I'll list that project here if you want to check it out. And then I just cut out some of the ones that I already had. So some of mine already have some um, designs on them. And then I'm just going to take this beehive stencil and my ink Waverly chalk paint and I'm going to chalk paint the hive onto the cork. So I used the beehive twice and then I used the bee by itself twice and then I spelled out the word bee and then I used the queen's crown for a queen bee. 
So here's a photo of the Hobby Lobby picture and then how ours turned out. I think these are so, so cute. I've just been really loving that bee this summer and I've been using it a lot in some other decor, but I just really learn love how they turned out and how they kind of can be interchanged and make different things. Channel for a little while you know that I have been really loving bees this summer and I've done a couple other bee projects um, using the same stencil actually and I'll list that uh, video here if you want to check it out but this stencil was identical almost to what was on this tray and I was so excited and I thought I could recreate this so we're gonna use a charger from the Dollar Tree and we're just gonna lay this stencil in the middle of the charger and we're going to use the black Waverly ink chalk paint and we're just going to give it one coat into the middle of this tray. I'll list all the supplies I'm using today in the description box below if you're interested in recreating this. I'll see if I can find the link to this stencil. I got this stencil on Amazon and um, it was pretty inexpensive and I've used it quite a bit this summer in some different projects. So we're just going to set that aside and let it dry really well before we take the tape off and the stencil off. So the Hobby Lobby tray is on the left and ours is on the right and I'm, pr I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. I think it's pretty close to what theirs was and it looks really great in my Beescape. For this project, we're going to start out with one of these wood signs that I picked up at Hobby Lobby. They're one of my favorites in the unfinished wood area. We're going to use my favorite stencil from Walmart. This is a Waverly stencil. Looks like a honeycomb. We're going to start over here on the edge, and you want to place your stencil kind of hanging off of the project. That way, it looks like it's fully finished once you have it all on. You're going to do this in sections, and so you're going to place some of the stencil in the part that you've already painted so that it lines up and it gives it a uniform design when you're all done. I'm going to lay my other stencil on top of this beehive stencil. These stencils came from Amazon in a pack of, I want to say, six. They're really beautiful. I will link them down in the description box. We'll be using them all through this video. So I'm just using some black folk art chalk paint. I'm going to go over the entire stencil, and then I want to give it a little bit of rustic distressed farmhouse look so I'm just using my same chippy brush no extra paint and I'm going to cover the entire sign. This is optional. I like rustic. If you don't you do not have to do this step. I also chose to go on the white sections around the sides because we don't want to have a stark white within black and yellow on the inside looking like it was weathered on one part and not the other. So once we get that all painted, we're going to take some sandpaper. This is from the Dollar Tree. I prefer the sanding block, but I haven't picked up one yet because mine was all used up. So I'm just going to cover this whole thing with some sandpaper. This is definitely up to you and where you kind of end like sanding is where you like what it looks like. I picked up this ribbon last year at Sam's Club. It's a bee ribbon. It's so beautiful and I never even used it last year so I have this one and another like honeycomb looking one. So I'm excited to use it this year. I just tied some twine in the middle and then I took these florals. They came from the Dollar Tree and I attached them to the side of the ribbon. And then I'm going to place a, a flower into the center of the bow that also came from Dollar Tree. That is it for this project. Let me know what you think about this one. For this project, we're going to take a house. I'm reusing this from another project. It came from 
Hobby Lobby. It was a clearance item. And another one of those Amazon stencils. I'm using a light yellow paint from Folk Art. When I got this one onto the house, it gave me like Winnie the Pooh vibes. You guys let me know what you think if you got Winnie the Pooh vibes from this. But I'm just going to take my same brush, no extra paint, and I'm going to go around the edges. This ribbon came from the Dollar Tree. I just made a shabby bow. And then I took one of these hearts that I had also got from the Dollar Tree and glued into the middle. This one's my favorite project of the day. Let me know what you think about this one. project we're going to take a burlap bag that I had on hand and another one of those really cute stencils from Amazon. Don't forget they're linked down below and I'm just using some black folk art chuck paint. What I really love about like burlap and when you stencil it on it gives you that kind of old-fashioned look or the distressed kind of look and I really like how that turns out. So you don't need total coverage here. I only did one coat. If you want it to be a little bit darker you can do a second coat. Then I'm just taking some polyfill I get mine. This one came from Hobby Lobby and you can also get it at Walmart and I'm just going to stuff my bag with my poly though. Once I get that all stuffed in there, I took some more of those florals from the Dollar Tree. These ones are my favorite. I don't know why, but they give me like springy bee vibes and I'm just going to put them in there. Um, I, I think I used four bundles. I didn't cut them apart or anything. So when I'm done with this project, I can definitely reuse these florals. That's one trick, especially when you're using a bag, because you don't need to cut them off. Once I get the bag all tied, I decided it needed a little extra something, so I decided to add a little bit more ribbon. I take that same Sam's Club ribbon, and I'm going to wrap it around the bag and tie it into a really cute bow. That is it for this project. Let me know what you guys think about this one. If you like projects like this, definitely think about subscribing, because these are the kind of projects I do on my channel. Now I love making coasters and I've made several sets of coasters on my channel. I decided to use up some of the stencils I hadn't used yet and I took a different um, B from each one of the stencils and I'm going to put them on the four coasters. I also have a stencil that is not part of this pack but I've used it several times in lots of different videos. I also included it into this um, coaster set. It's the B that has the crown on top and I'll link a video at the end of this video showing some other ways that I've used it. If you're liking today's video and you've made it this far, don't forget to hit that like button. It gives my video some love and it gets it to other people. Here they are styled. These are very simple black and white. I did go ahead and put a coat on top so they are uh, secure when you're using them as actual coasters and let me know what you think about this one. trip to Dollar Tree I found these wood pieces that said honeycombs to me and so I picked up several of them and I thought it would be really fun to DIY with these today. So they do come on a stick I just went ahead and took the stick off. It took a little bit of elbow grease to get it off and you want to be careful because you don't want it to break off um, but if you wiggle it back and forth it will come out of the hole. 
So I'm going to go ahead and cover the piece with some Cashew uh, Waverly chalk paint and then I love this honeycomb stencil. I went ahead and went over it. I am going to do that same technique through the whole video so I'm only going to show it here once. But I took this charger that I also got at the Dollar Tree. I love the color navy. I love it for fall. I love it for summer. <laughs> I just really love that color. So they have these really cool chargers there now that have like a galvanized middle. And I saw this sticker in the like uh, wall paper area and I thought oh that would be really cool because it looks like honeycomb so I went ahead and stuck the um, sticker onto our charger and then I just cut off some areas that were hanging over um, you pretty much get to use the whole sticker not very much of it gets cut off so that's kind of nice as well so I took our honeycomb piece and I'm just going to add this little bee sticker that I got from Hobby Lobby. These are really pretty though, like, um, like little jewel stickers. I made a shabby bow out of some ribbon that I got from Sam's Club. I know that's kind of like a weird place to get some ribbon, but I noticed they have quite a bit on sale this year as well. And they're really large ribbon rolls. So if you can find them there, um, definitely pick some up. And they have some other colors as well. But we're going to take our honeycomb piece and glue that down down to the bottom of our charger and then onto our bow we're going to glue this really cute um, silver and yellow button into the middle and then that is it for this DIY. You guys let me know what you think about this one. project we're going to create a wreath and I've been holding on to this scarf for a really long time and I finally get to use it so I'm excited. But we're using the large wreath frame and we're going to just cover it with some burlap ribbon. This is ribbon that came from I believe Hobby Lobby but Dollar Tree does sell the same ribbon. So I cut the scarf um, just at the seam and we're going to wrap the scarf around the wreath. Now it is kind of thin so that's why I added the rib ribbon underneath because I didn't want the wreath frame to show. So this is the most adorable little um, scarf I have ever seen. It has the cutest bees on it. So we're just going to go ahead and wrap it around. It's like a navy color as well along with those yellow bees and I just really like that color combination together. So we're going to go ahead and take some more of our ribbon. I tied a shoelace ribbon together this time with both sets of ribbon and we're just going to glue that up at the top. I'm also going to add one of our little honeycomb pieces here and I did the same process as I did at the beginning of the video. Now you could do several variations here. You could add a bee as well if you want. I added a metal bee down here at the bottom. It is a plant stick from the Dollar Tree. Let me know what you think about this one. For this project we're going to make a little arrow sign and I picked up these three arrow wood pieces from the Dollar Tree. I also picked up this bunny like stake and we're going to glue them onto our bunny stake. But before we glue them onto our stake we're going to go ahead and cover them all with our Cashew Waverly chalk paint. I just removed the stake part from our bunny along with the bow and we're going to use that piece for our crossing piece. I really love that bunny and I'm going to save him for a different project. But we're going to go ahead and glue our arrows onto the board. I kind of wanted them to be at an angle but there wasn't enough room on the stake to put all three at an angle so they had to be kind of at a straight uh, length so the bottoms could fit under the arrow part. Once I get them all on there, I realized I didn't do any dry brushing to these after I already kind of started the project, so I was a little bummed about that, but I do really like how this turned out, so if you want it to be a little bit more farmhouse looking, definitely go over it with a coat of white paint to give it a little bit more of a dry brush distress look. So I'm using these stickers that I got from Hobby Lobby. I've used these in several projects so they really went a long way. You could also use a cutting machine here or Dollar Tree has so many options when it comes to stickers and letters. You could use those as well. So I glued our uh, honeycomb piece on the end and if you haven't guessed yet we're going to um, spell out the word honeycomb and this one's going to be honeycomb lane. So I just added a couple more of those little um, 
jeweled stickers. These were like a little honeycomb, and then I added a bee here. These are all going to, of course, be bee-themed things that we're pointing to. Our next one is going to be bee crossing, and we're going to go ahead and spell that out with our same letters, and then we're going to add a couple bees to our sign. And then the bottom one is going to say honey, and we're going to add um, just a couple of honey type related stickers there. All my stickers came from Hobby Lobby today, but you definitely have tons of options for stickers from the Dollar Tree, or if you can wait until they go on sale at Hobby Lobby, they are a great deal. I really love how this one turned out. I'm going to go ahead and add it to a planter, and you guys let me know what you think about this one. I have to admit, this is the very first, like, crossing type of sign I've ever made that had the arrows. I don't know why I've never made one, but this turned out adorable. I definitely will have to make another one. For this project, we're going to take one of those rustic wood pieces from the Dollar Tree, another one of our honeycombs that we painted similar to the front or the beginning of our video. I also have one of these honey stir sticks. I got mine from an Amazon return store that I have in my city, but I will put a link down in my description box if you want to check them out on Amazon and pick them up. I think they're super adorable. So we're going to use some hot glue and we're going to just kind of simulate honey dripping off of our stir stick. I've seen this on a couple other channels before and and I thought I would give it a try. Someone who does a really good job at this is Kiki DIYs. She's made some really adorable bee DIYs using that same technique. Then we're going to take this Farm Fresh uh, lettering and we're going to go ahead and paint it black. This was my son's idea. He thought that this would look really adorable and I think it turned out really cute so I definitely kudos to him for designing this project. So we're going to go ahead and glue that onto our sign. If you are not following me on my other socials and you want to check them out, I will have links down in my description box for each of my socials. I would love it if you went and checked me out there and gave me a follow if that's something that you would like to do. So once we get our farm fresh glued on, we're going to go ahead and glue our bow onto our little honeycomb piece. And that is it for this cute little project. Let me know what you think about this one. So my Dollar Tree started selling these little strips of fabric. I hope this is not the only fabric they're going to come out with. I haven't had any new fabric at my store and I really like the fat quarters more than these little strips. But these were bee themed and so I decided to go ahead and pick it up. We're going to make a cute little shabby bow. Um, all we're going to do, I love to do this technique. If you've been following me for a while, you know how much I love this. You know what I left out of this bow though? <laughs> Let me know down in the, um, the comments if you can pick out what you think I left out of this bow that is one of my signature items to craft with. I'd love to see what you guys come up with. Um, but we're going to go ahead and cut these into little strips and then we're going to make a shabby bow. I like to use a piece of the fabric in the bow so I just go ahead and crisscross them. My last piece of fabric is a piece that I tie off the bow with. I love to do this technique because then it just becomes part of the bow and you don't waste any of the fabric. So we're using this um, honeycomb piece that we painted on the stick this time. We're just going to glue this little bow up at the top and that is it for this like actual piece of the honeycomb. Comb. I like that one. It's pretty simple. So I took a little pot that I had painted for a previous project. This did come from the Dollar Tree and they do have them out right now so if you want to pick up pots now is your time to go get them. I'm going to stick some floral foam in there and I'm just going to add my honeycomb along with some flowers. I only had pink on hand. I think yellow would look better so I might kind of redo this a little bit later with some yellow flowers. Um, I've been really trying to craft with my stash this year. I'm on a budget. I'm doing like a whole budgeting thing and so anyway I've really been trying to use what I had. But I get all my flowers in there I'm just going to add some Spanish moss and then that is it for this super cute easy project. Let me know what you guys think about this one.
I just picked up this wood round from, I believe, Hobby Lobby. They also sell some of these wood rounds at Walmart, but all I'm going to do is take my Folk Art white chalk paint and cover the entire thing. Now for Christmas I received a silhouette and I finally was able to cut out something and I know you guys are laughing at me but I have been <laughs> struggling with any kind of cutting machine which is why I don't really use them um, but since I got this for Christmas I thought I would try it out so I'm just going to apply my decal here to the front of the sign and then I'm going to take the tape off. So my paint was a little bit wet when I put the sticky part down so some of it came off but it gives it a distressed look and so I am okay with that. I created a shabby bow just using some fabric and you guys know I make these all the time. They just lay over each other and then I use some twine to tie it off in the middle and then I use some of my totally dazzled brooches. I put one here in the middle and then here it is styled in some decor. stencil up on Amazon and so I will link that down in my description box if you want to pick it up but it's just a cute French farmhouse bee stencil and I went ahead and did the crown and the bee on the blank um, burlap pieces and then I took some fabric which is my favorite way to dress up anything really um, and I'm just going to tie two pieces into each section of the banner so I'm going to put one or two pieces of fabric on each side of the banner piece I guess is a better way to say that and then this project is complete and here it is styled in some decor. up these pots from the Dollar Tree. I'm going to use my white folk art chalk paint, cover the pot with the white paint, and then I'm going to use my bee stencil again, and this time I'm just going to use the bee from it. I think it's time for me to get a new stencil. A little bit of my stencil is kind of um, not able to come through all the way, uh, but I didn't mind that because it gives it more of a vintage feel, and that was always with the look I'm going for so I go ahead and stencil that onto the front of the pot and then I'm going to take some more of my fabric and make a little bow and I'm going to glue that to the top above where the bee is and then I took another one of my totallydazzle.com brooches and I glued that into the middle and here it is styled in some decor. As long as I've got So I took one of these signs from the Dollar Tree and I just popped it out and I started painting it on the front side. Don't know why I didn't think to flip it over and then paint it, which was a lot easier. Um, but then I'm just going to take my bee stencil again and I'm only going to do the bee. Then I picked up these uh, stencils. They say be happy, be brave, be kind, be you. And I took the happy and I'm just going to uh, stencil the happy under the bee. Once I do that, I took another little shabby bow I made out of our fabric and some twine. And I'm going to glue that to the top left hand corner like I always do. And then I'm going to take another totally dazzled jewel and stick that in the middle. And here it is styled in some decor.
this project, we're going to take a home sign that I got from Hobby Lobby. I covered it with some white folk art chunk paint. This is my absolute favorite stencil to use when doing any kind of bead DIYs. I love the honeycomb look. I picked it up at Walmart. It's a Waverly stencil, I believe. If I can't find that exact stencil, I'll link one down below that is similar for you guys to pick up from Amazon. I'm using some light yellow chalk paint and I'm just going to cover this whole sign with our beehive design. So once I get that onto the block, I cut out this super adorable thing that says kind words are honey to the soul. I absolutely loved that. And I'm just going to go ahead and place it right on top of our honeycomb. Once I get that laid out, I'm going to take some ribbon that came from the Dollar Tree. I'm going to make a shabby bow and I'm going to attach that to the top of this sign. That is it for this easy project. Let me know what you think about this one. this project I'm going to use this wood round that I had in my stash. I got this from the Target dollar spot. It came with some stencils that are for fall. It came with like four different fall and Halloween stencils. I'm going to go ahead and put that aside for a later date. I'm going to cover our round with some white folk art chalk paint and then we're going to use our same trusty old beehive stencil. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a section and then when you're doing a large project like this with a smaller stencil you want to line up a section of that you've already stenciled into the stencil and then keep stenciling. That way you get the same design as you go around the whole project. This is one of the biggest things I've ever cut out with my silhouette, and you guys know I don't use it that often, so I was super excited when I cut this out. It took me a long time to weed it, but I absolutely love how it turned out, and this is simple. All we're going to do is lay it down on top of our beehive design, make sure we get it on there straight, and that is it. Let me know what you think about this one. So this project is the easiest DIY in the history of DIYs, but all I did was cut out this bee from my silhouette, and I'm laying it on this riser I picked up from the Target dollar spot. I didn't paint it or add anything else to it because I want to continue to use it as a riser, but here it is styled for you guys. Let me know what you think about this one. So for this project, we're going to create a super cute floral arrangement. I took this box that was in my stash, and I'm going to go ahead and cover it with some white Bogart chalk paint. Then I cut out this super cute bee on my silhouette, and I'm going to add it to the front of our box. So since I am currently on a no spend challenge this month, which included craft supplies as well, I have definitely been crafting for my stash. If you've been following me for a little while, you know that I am not a really good at using my silhouette, but I have had some fun this month learning how to use it and using some supplies in my closet. So if you are someone who is maybe trying to save money this year or you're trying to, you know, just use up the things that you have, I definitely recommend a no spend a challenge for you guys. I have been watching tons of videos on YouTube and I've been totally inspired by the budget community. So I will leave some of my favorites down in the description box if you're interested in checking those out. But here is our floral arrangement. I think this is so simple and sweet and I love how it turned out. For this project, I took one of those bamboo cutting boards from the Dollar Tree and another cutout from my silhouette. I did not add any paint to this project. I wanted it to be just the natural wood look. 
I added my cutout for my silhouette and then I made a really fun shabby bow for the top of our project. This ribbon came from the Dollar Tree and I definitely suspect they will have it again this year, but it's the honeycomb ribbon and then the white ribbon has bees on it. Then I decided to take this chalkboard tag that also came from the Dollar Tree and add it into the middle because I thought that it just it gave it a really fun farmhouse look. And then I'm going to add a button right to the middle just to kind of polish this whole project off and then here it is styled for you guys let me know what you think about this one we're gonna make another sign and I'm telling you guys I cannot believe all the things I had in my stash this was a happy fall sign that I believe came from the Dollar Tree um, plus section it was three dollars it could have came from the Target dollar spot too I'm not 100% sure but I'm just gonna remove the pumpkins and the words and then I do give the inside of this box a coat of white folk art chalk paint so once I have that covered, I took my cutout from my silhouette, and this one's a little bit larger. It says Be Strong. I really like that. I got a set on there of Be Strong, Be Grateful, and I was really thinking about hanging like each of them up in the hallway by my kids' rooms just to give them some motivation when they like go to school and things. So I might create that project later on, and if I do, I'll go ahead and share it with you guys. But I made another shabby bow using Dollar Tree uh, ribbon and this is a larger like honeycomb ribbon and then I use the buffalo check. I like the buffalo check in this one because it kind of went with the black and white that's going on in our picture. So then I had some totally dazzled jewels and I went ahead and added one of them to the middle. If you want to check them out I will have a link down in my description box. But that is it for this super fun project. Let me know what you think about this one.